Hello. For context, I've been giving blood since I was 17. That gives me about somewhere over 40, 60 donations, give, give or take. That's uh, giving, a, giving a pint or two, that's uh, I think like two gallons, give or take. Uh, what happens when you give blood? Well, at least more than 48 hours beforehand, you, need to, you should probably figure out where you're going and, and who you're going to give blood with. For that, usually you, you, you can usually make an appointment with whatever place you're giving blood with, or, you, or most of them also take walk-ins. If in most places in the country, I'd say go talk to the Red Cross, locally to Dayton. There is the Community Blood Center who runs blood drives and has a uh, dedicated facility in town. Uh, a couple blocks from here, uh, well, more than a couple. In any case, uh, so before that, you can try to make an appointment, but you should definitely know where you're going and, w and when. 40 hour, 48 hours before. Stop taking any aspirin that you may be taking. Aspirin is a blood thinner. They don't like that in the blood that they're trying to give other people. When you get there, you will come in, you will get checked in, they will want a photo ID, if, assuming this is the first time you've given with them. If you, some places will give you a donor ID card that is not a photo ID, you might be able to use that instead. Y they will give you a questionnaire that you have to fill out. It's things, it'll have things like, have you or anyone in your family had crucifixion felt Jacob disease. Have you been living with somebody who has a who has had a positive test for HIV in the last year? Have you been out of the country in the last five years? Have you been in the UK for more than five years for time that leads up to more than five years since 1980? These are things that they are trying to fi find out and screen for various diseases and risk factors. Uh, at least one of them is mad cow disease. I I, I'm unaware of anybody who has actually had mad cow disease, but. Uh, the, after that, the, the questionnaire will be confidential. You can keep it to yourself. After that, they will take, you will be screened. The screening will be with a qualified uh, nurse or, or higher grade of medical professional. It will be private. They will review any questions that you, that they did not expect, that you, that they, di they did, that they did not get an answer that they expected. They will take a, take your blood pressure, temperature, uh, pulse, they will check the insides of both of your arms for visually for something possibly uh, stuff related to drug usage. Uh, they will also uh, they will also take a prick of your finger so that they can get a tiny bit of blood so they can get, find out your hemocrit, which is the b approximate amount of red blood cells, so that they can be sure that it, when they take a pint of them, you aren't going to fall over dead. So, after that. And after passing all of that, they also might take, they also will want your vital statistics like such as height and weight and age. After all of that, you go to a, uh, you get in line with, if there, if there is a line, they will have you lie down on a specialized bed. They will poke, they will pat at your arm, at, where, at your arm to figure out where your, uh, where your blood vessels are. They will, uh, after that, they will sterilize the area. They will typically give you a cuff, uh, a, Blood, a pressure cuff, so that they, so that you don't lose too, mu you don't get too much blood going back into your body instead of into their, into their blood bags. They will, th after they tap and figure out where your, where your blood vessel is, they will sterilize the area on your arm. They will, and then after that, they will stick a needle in you. The, honestly, the needle is not the worst part. The worst part is the finger stick, and even the finger stick is not that painful either. Uh, if you've ever been stung by a bee, this is way less of an issue than being stung by a bee. So, after that, once they have a needle in you, you they will they will uh, take blood. You'll sit down for about ten, five, ten minutes as blood drains out of you. There is a automated automated weight scale thing that will shut off the blood flow once they get a pint. They will also take some tubules tubes that will. Uh, that they will run through specific tests for various things that they want to be extra, extra careful and do not get into the, into the general blood supply. After that, you, after the, your thing is done, someone will, co will come by. They will, uh, they will pull the needle out, stick a band, push a, a, uh, a, a gauze pad on it. You, are, you will hold your arm up with pressure on the thing for two for a minute or so. Take it down. They will put a, they will put a wrap around it to make sure it doesn't go away. They will give you instructions not to do any weightlifting or, or alcohol or alcohol drinking or anything else dehydrating for the next couple of days. Make sure you eat lots drinks lots of fluids. They will all, and then you will be you will be told to go over to a ca cafe cantina area where you will eat snacks and drink juice for at least ten minutes so they make sure that you aren't going to faint before you walk out. Um, they also advise you to 
drink lots of fluids. Okay, I'm out. <laughs>